Good afternoon, good afternoon, welcome. Please be welcome, dear teachers. Welcome, welcome all of you, please. Um, hoping that you had a great day. Welcome to our second webinar from Richmond. Today, we are extremely grateful um, for having you here and we are excited to share the following topic, how to create a student-centered learning classroom. As our speaker in this session, we are fortunate to be joined by Mr. Bahir Alogaban, English academic coach from Richmond Santillana Compartir. Mr. Bahir is a master in TEFL and has over 10 years for experience in the EFL and ESL field. He has a B2 proficiency certification from Cambridge Language Assessment, as well as extensive experience in the classroom and is an online training instructor certified. Now we can welcome Mr. Bahir. Please welcome Mr. Bahir. Hello, dear teachers. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Julio, for your presentation. I would like to ask all of the teachers if they can open their microphone or if they can open their camera so we can communicate together in this webinar too. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, so let's get started with our webinar. We're going to learn some information about how to create a student-centered uh, learning classroom. Uh, this topic might be very interesting for the teachers since uh, during the pandemic, most of the teachers needed to create some lessons that uh, follows the student's attention. And in this case, uh, we are going to uh, learn some techniques and tips about that. And during the meeting, I would uh, like to ask all of the teachers to communicate and participate in the chat. If they have any questions, uh, I would uh, appreciate if you can also send uh, your messages or your comments on the chat so we can also answer them back. We're going to focus on three main things uh, in this webinar. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce what is why we have to create student-centered learning classroom. And some, we're going to review some strategies that uh, could be applied for, for all of the learners. And by the end of that, we're going to check uh, one item uh, about how to create a mixed ability class. So all of the students in a class could uh, receive the benefits program, okay? So uh, my name is Vahid. I'm one of the academic coaches of Santillana. And here is my contact. If you have any questions, you can also contact uh, via email with me. Okay, so let's get started with a question. Uh, of course, I think all of us are have been uh, working as a teacher in our life, and we are teacher or we are trainer. I would like to ask you a question, dear teachers, uh, if, you, uh, if you can also share your comments. What are your abilities as a teacher? You can start uh, with, I think I'm good at, for example, teaching grammars. I'm thinking, I think I'm good at uh, creating per work activities and so on. Because, you know, uh, everyone has different skills and teachers also are going to follow the same thing. And I would like to ask uh, the teachers to uh, write their comments. I'm going to also start from myself. Uh, I think I'm good at creating some um, discussion activity with my students and teach them the grammar or the content of the class. I have the ability of that. Also, I think I'm good at uh, creating or exp uh, explaining the grammar in a way that the students can uh, do a project with that and present it uh, in the class. And I'm also very good at creating or uh, like uh, providing activities so the students can uh, like implement the peer assessment in their class, okay? So these are, for example, my ability. What, are, what about you, uh, dear teachers? I would like to check the comments. Uh, okay, Miss Luli is mentioning, I love to make my students work in CLIL through, through art. Oh, amazing. That's a good idea because the students will learn the language and later they will apply it into some concepts or in different ways 
that they can see the benefits of learning that language. Amazing. Thank you for sharing your ideas. You can all, you're allowed to open your microphone uh, if you want, or you can send a message through the chat. Amazing. Miss Bane is mentioning that uh, she likes to work in projects. Uh, that's amazing because project-based learning is one of the most, uh, like, like one of the famous uh, methodologies that we can apply in our classroom. So students will follow the, some steps in order to learn the content. Amazing. Miss Noelia is mentioning, I love to make my student work through music. Amazing. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if you have ever heard about English attack. Uh, one of the ways that the students also uh, like, uh, in, like create or process their language is by learning the content and uh, produce that uh, through the music. Amazing. Thank you for sharing your ideas. Oh, amazing. Mr. Antonio is mentioning I'm good at teaching ESP military matters. Uh, teaching English as a special, as a, for a specific reason. That's amazing. Okay, Ms. Carolina is mentioning, I'm good at teaching grammar and vocabulary through interactive games. Yeah, uh, post-pandemic activities are going to be always uh, uh, like newly or uh, interactive. And in this case, the, the teachers also need to find uh, some ways to apply them. Amazing. Mr. Jose is mentioning, I'm good at teaching with music and with uh, movie clips. Oh, amazing. The thing that we didn't have, we didn't uh, used to have it maybe in the last five years, on five years ago. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Uh, we are going to have also YouTube transmission. I would like to ask Mr. Julio if we have any comments uh, from you too. Until now, no. I, I would, you know, I, I, I'm asking it. I'm asking people to do questions. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, just uh, uh, let us know. So all of the teachers uh, who are participating in YouTube or Zoom can also learn um, from that. Okay. Sure. So let's get start. Uh, Okay, let's see, there is one more comment. Okay, Mr. Jose is mentioning, I'm good at preparing for international exam like IELTS, FCE, PET, and TOEFL. Amazing, you're a professional teacher, very good. I'm good at teaching grammar and vocabulary through online games and online activities. Very good. Okay, don't worry. Let's get started. Uh, during the meeting, you can also mention some of uh, your abilities so we can discuss uh, those abilities together. So let's get started. As I was mentioning, today's topic is going to be about uh, creating student-centered learning environment. Um, in the beginning, I would like to mention one important thing. Why we have to create uh, student-centered learning or what is the history of that? Uh, is it necessary to uh, following this methodology or it could be an option for our methodology? Why uh, lots of English teachers know about that, but they cannot apply that, okay? These are the uh, common questions that uh, students and teachers are following that because uh, if you can uh, just look at the education that we have received maybe 20 years ago and comparing the, them with, for example, daily education that we have uh, right now, we, uh, we used to have a teacher who was instructing us all the time and uh, that it was a teacher-centered classroom, but uh, today we're going to check some contents about creating student-centered classroom. So uh, as you can see, this is one of the key factors of memorable educational journey. And uh, teachers are always looking for ways to tap into a student's urge and learn what interests them on their own. Two important questions that uh, we need to answer 
before presenting uh, the new terms of creating student centers classroom, how can we have a knowledgeable students or how can we have independent students? Uh, this is the main question. Uh, if we can answer to these two questions, we can understand the needs for creating, creating a student center uh, environment. I would like to ask the teachers uh, if they can also share their ideas, how can we have a knowledgeable students or have an independent students in our classroom based on the teaching styles that we are following daily? Is it important to follow specific uh, methodology to reach that or not? You can also open your microphone Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Anybody else wants to participate, wants to give a comment, maybe? Ms. Guerrero, do you want to ask something or to answer something? We can keep moving, Mr. Bahir. Sure. I let you know if somebody has a question. Yes, thank you very much for your support. The important thing that we always as a teacher need to focus is how to grow our students or how to teach behavior uh, to the students with the new methodologies that we have. For example, these days, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the new textbook or new methodologies, we are um, like having new, uh, terms called, for example, mindfulness or uh, mindset or other uh, topics that the students need to learn how to behave well in their, uh, how to behave well, uh, for example, in their body, in their minds. Also, we have new terms of uh, methodology, which is called citizenship, that the students will learn some content that could be useful in order to be the best version of themselves in a society. These are the new things that uh, we are facing. The question is how we can create, uh, how we can have a knowledgeable students. The simple answer for that, I can uh, check that there are some uh, teachers are answering. Mr. Anderson is mentioning that by creating activities and strategies to make them uh, actively participate in EFL classroom, exactly. The, the matter of activities, very good. Ms. Bani is mentioning, I think that uh, uh, to have that kind of students is important, respect, respect the learning styles. Yeah, this depends on the learning styles. We can create different type of activities, yes. But a general answer for that is related to how we transmit the information to our students. Are we following the traditional way of teaching the grammar, teaching the rules, and uh, have, for example, uh, following, for example, the methodology that maybe 100 years ago was published or was introduced us, or are we following the new methods of teaching the language? For example, are we following the inductive way of teaching grammar or deductive way, which is for adults or for the uh, young learners. Yeah, also Mr. Anderson is mentioning that working with 21st uh, century skills. Yeah, that's the idea. With uh, those items or with those skills, the students will learn how to be independent. They will learn how to uh, do the process and uh, like do the project by themselves. As Ms. Uh, Bani also mentioned, uh, she's, for example, very good at creating a pro uh, project based learning activity. So, with these kinds of activities, the students will learn how to uh, do, the investiga do the investigation and how to do all of the activities by themselves. So, if you look at these terms that I was mentioning, who was the role, who was the first, uh, the main role of the, those activities? Well, the teacher was only uh, explaining the activity. The main role of the, those activities were the students who were doing the activities, processing the activities and uh, sharing the result or presenting the result with the classmen. So 
we have already answered this question that how can we uh, create those students by uh, providing or by introducing new ways of uh, methodology. One of them is called inquiry-based learning that you're going to learn about that in the next webinar. Another one is problem-based learning because in the society that we are going to have, uh, the students need to learn the content, analyze that and find a solution for that. Project-based learning as uh, one of the teacher mentioned and the one, uh, the type of learning that I really like is called discovery learning. Sometimes uh, we don't need to always follow a technique. Uh, it's based on our curiosity, curiosity and based on uh, the matter of investigation, uh, which is called discovery learning. And so many ways to help our students to uh, attend, like, uh, adopt this, uh, the new methods of uh, like learning. So whatever you call it, as I mentioned, the emphasis, the emphasis is on the students becoming empowered to their own, uh, their learning. Uh, it could be implementing citizenship, mindfulness activity, or any kind of communication based uh, approach, okay? So the idea is that the students will learn how to do the activities by themselves and become independent. This is the, uh, the most important things prior to uh, introducing the, uh, the terms of creating the student-centered learning. Now, imagine you would like to uh, design your own uh, like student-centered classroom. There are the important things that you need to always uh, follow. The first thing is, uh, that as, as, I, as you can see, there are six signs that you need to follow. The first thing is active learning. Who is participating more in the class? Are the students are following some strategies or uh, sequence in order to reach uh, the solution or, or is the teacher uh, following, uh, is the teacher is providing all of the material. The second one is collaborative learning. Have we provided any kind of product, like prayer work activity or collaboration activity? So students uh, will uh, learn together and uh, present the result in the class. Have we provided any differentiation in the class? So the students who need special need uh, can also at, uh, maybe uh, reach to the contents. It is very important because uh, in each class, we're going to have different, uh, we need to follow the differentiation in the class. So students who need more attention can also follow the class. Have we followed uh, the social emotional learning? Are we respecting them? Uh, who is the, uh, or what is the main uh, voice of the class? The student or the teacher? Who is participating more in the class? And the most important one, due to the pandemic, the technology integration. Are we following the uh, method that was introduced uh, maybe 56 years ago, or the new methods that we can apply and introduce the students. Those are the signs of a sample student-centered learning. So let me check uh, that uh, there is a comment uh, from Miss Luli. Let's see. Uh, she's mentioning that we only guide our students. Yes. This is the sign of also a uh, student-centered classroom. They are the ones who are supposed to do the jobs as they are more willing to listen to peers than teachers. It's, of course, they love to uh, learn something from their uh, classmates uh, with the uh, like students who are in their age rather than the teachers, okay? That's the, the matter of these days. So these are the signs. I would like to ask the teachers uh, what kind of, what other signs can you mention in order to just design your student-centered classroom? These are some sample uh, examples. What other signs can you mention? You're allowed to open your microphone or 
you can send a comment in the chat. Okay, I have a message. Collaboration, yes, exactly. Collaboration is another technique that, uh, yes, we have mentioned here. Yeah, if you have a class with collaboration, we can have it. Very good. Okay, uh, there is another comment. Yeah, creating this, the activities that the students can love them. Oh, that's a good comment. Uh, we need to follow the actually the the likes and dislikes of the students of course they need to follow some uh, uh important uh subject and in this case we can also provide some topics oh and, and our teacher is mentioning motivation motivation activity yeah motivation activities are very also important because the students will uh fill the class and later they can uh, enter, they can follow the class without any problem. Amazing. Any more comment? Okay, so let's continue. Until now, we have understood uh, why we have to apply student-centered classroom and what are the signs of them? There is a comment, let me see, Mr. Antonio. Students come out taking challenges and exploring new aspects of their learning. Yeah, when the students start, when we lighten up their mind and the students are already uh, uh, like curious in order to find out about the solution. And very good, Ms. Luli is mentioning student's choice maybe. If you're following the student's choice, we could also reach a good uh, level of teaching. Very good. Now I would like to mention something amazing. Uh, so we can understand uh, about uh, why we have to uh, create active learning and why we have to create like uh, focus on collaboration as an example and as, like two example of signs of creating student-centered classroom. Active learning, um, you know, no, if you have, if you're a teacher and you have been working with your students without any interaction, you might feel that, okay, the class is like died or doesn't have any motivation to follow. Okay. So the, uh, in active learning, we always uh, present a term, which is called teacher talk. Okay. The, the limited of the, 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 the duration that teacher can uh, like mention the topic or contents and during the lesson, which is uh, called teacher talk. So as you can also mention, as you can also check that, the first step toward active learning is often, is often to limit teacher talk. If you want to create a student-centered learning, you need to uh, provide some uh, like content for the students so they can do the investigation and present the result in the class. If you don't provide those uh, like activities or uh, maybe materials for the students before the class, they would always listen to you because they are not accustomed to the new way of education. Or uh, in our example, as he's mentioning, a lecture or the teacher can start by calling on individual students to answer question as an example that uh, I'm doing uh, in the webinar. In this case, the participant or the teachers or the students can follow uh, the webinar or the class easily. Yes, as Mr. Jose is mentioning, TTT, teacher take uh, talking time, exactly. This is very important because uh, we can follow that easily. The next important sign of uh, student-centered uh, classroom is called collaboration. Uh, imagine a class that no one is participating and no one is doing any per, per work activity. Okay, thanks to, for example, Zoom, and thanks to breakout rooms, uh, we could uh, have maybe create some like uh, spaces so students can do collaboration activity 
uh, we online classes. But in the uh, before the pandemic, we had uh, this term in a like a better way or a, uh, in a best version of that because the students could feel themselves and do the collaborative activities. So as you can also check that collaborate, collaborative learning is not only more efficient, but is also but also more effective when uh, in this case, when working with peers, with the students, get instant feedback. Uh, they can also listen to their classmates and uh, also receive the uh, instant uh, recommendation. They can develop social emotional skills. There is an also evidence that the students learn complex ideas more effectively uh, when explained by a peer. This is the uh, main focus of collaboration because when we present a pair work activity to our students, uh, the students can work exactly, uh, work together with some uh, design activities. And I was mentioning in the beginning, I'm really good at creating uh, some activities uh, like collaborative activities and providing some rubrics and presenting um, peer assessments. So each student can follow the uh, rubric and they can grade uh, their classmates uh, like a, attempt or uh, maybe uh, their speech or presentation. So this is going to be the most important uh, fact of that. Yes, there is. Uh, there are too many comments. Let me check one of them. Um, Mr. Anderson is mentioning that students love breakout classroom. Yes, breakout rooms. There are a lot of activities that they can develop not only for collaborative work, but also with uh, cooperative work. Exactly, cooperation is also very important uh, in an EFL classroom. So we have been checking the. Uh, in this case the signs of student-centered classroom, and we have checked two of them. But now I would like to ask you, the teachers, to please look at this photo and try to memorize as many things as you can. So uh, later, I'm going to ask you some questions. So based on that, we will learn some uh, aspects and also some information about ourselves and later students. So I appreciate if you can also uh, check the photo. Please do not take a photo capture screen. Just uh, look at the photo and try to memorize as many things as you can. For example, what's the weather? What are they doing? Uh, how many dogs are there? Um, are they enjoying with their couples, with their children, and so on. Okay, let's have uh, one minute so you can check the contents. Are you ready? Okay, let's go for the questions. Let's check how good is your memory? Who can tell me how many animals were there? Or who can tell me what was the weather like? The easiest one. Or how many umbrellas did you count? Or who was running? You can tell me, you can also send your messages on the chat or activate your microphone. Okay, there is one comment here. Very good. Five umbrellas. Wow, it was sunny, sunny or cloudy. Yeah, a girl was running. 
You remember a monkey, three animals, four umbrellas, and 17 women. women. Okay. So let's check the answers. How is the weather? Yeah, it's sunny, exactly, because they're taking, uh, they're resting by the, uh, by the shore, we can say also. And how was the, how many animals are there? We have some, we have a monkey, some dogs. Yes. Three animals here and there is no animal there. However, there are some, no, there's no animal more there. And the last one was, how many umbrellas were there? One, two, three. Amazing, very good. And the last one was, uh, who was running? <laughs> there's a dog which was running. There is a little girl who, uh, who is running. Okay, why we have asked this question? In order to present that, each one of our students or we as a teacher have different abilities because I would like to show you about the learning styles. In any class, you're going to have uh, different types of students. Some of them are visual. They prefer using pictures, uh, posters, flashcards, and uh, some images in order to follow their understanding. Some of them are musical, auditory. <laughs> they prefer only uh, using sounds and music. In uh, like online classes, uh, most of the students uh, like uh, use some uh, social medias in order to uh, like present or learn from uh, for those contents. Some of the students are verbal. They prefer using words in speech and writing and creating some, uh, for example, paragraph in order to mention their ideas. Some of them are kinesthetic or physical. They always prefer using their hands, their body. They like to sing and uh, also dance. Some of them are logical, mathematical. Some of them are social and um, the rest of them are solid, uh, solitary. They prefer to do their works alone in their uh, uh, comfort zone and don't change anything, okay? In this case, we have a class with lots of learning styles, as you can also check that in the photo on the right part. In a class, we're going to have uh, different students with different, uh, in this case, learning styles. As an example, I, well, if I want, I would like to mention that I'm very verbal, <laughs> verbal, and I'm also social. I like to do the, uh, for example, activities uh, uh, with my classmates or with other people. And I also used to be very kinesthetic because uh, I used to do lots of training before that. Okay, so um, I'm in this in the uh, sharing these three learning styles. How about you? Could you please also share your learning style or mention some uh, something which is similar to you? Please write in the chat. Uh, Mr. Julio, if uh, someone is writing the YouTube, you can also mention that. So uh, I can. Until now, no, sir. OK, thank you. Sure. Okay, Miss Pamela is mentioning kinesthetic, are very good. Logical, mathematical, and solitary. Uh -huh. Oh, Miss Maria Isabel is a visual learning like me also. I have a good picture uh, like memory. Uh -huh. Miss Pane is also visual. Miss Luli is kinesthetic and mathematical. 
exactly. The idea is this one, Mr. Antonio. All of them, depending uh, with the topic, most of us have the uh, have these kind of learning style in our body or in mind. It depends on the situation, we can change um, to different learning styles. Okay, and maybe. Uh, that one teacher or one person could, uh, were introduced those learning styles in the best way. So we could um, like recognize that this is our learning style. Yeah, amazing. So what we can learn from that? I would like to show you some techniques and some ideas in order to teach different uh, activities starting from reading, later listening, speaking, and uh, writing, okay? We are teachers. I've been teaching also uh, in preschool, not in preschool, in primary, uh, once in secondary, and also in university and academics in the different uh, variety of ages, also for adults. Uh, we always divide the students uh, in a advanced students, and I like to use the terms of less advanced students because they're trying to do their best uh, while you're studying their education. So some ideas about reading activities related to uh, creating a self student self uh, self uh, creating a student centered classroom. So the first idea for advanced student is write a new vocabulary word on the board, which they have finished with their activity and use this for review. Uh, for example, the students can do as many, acti uh, as many activities as they want by doing this review activity. And for the students who are in, uh, less, ad who are in less advanced, we can uh, print cold vocabularies and leave those um, on the board, for example, and make use of visual uh, where possible. So in case of the students who are visual, they can also follow the reading activities easier. And in case who are uh, ready for the activities, we can write the new vocabulary once they have finished uh, with the reading activity. That's an idea. In our idea, in case of, for example, uh, doing a reading activity, for example, set a sense before diving to the reading activity. So it's going, there's going to be preparation uh, like for the students. They can look at any pictures, they can heading, and uh, later they can understand the situation and later we'll present them the reading activity. However, for the advanced students, we can rewrite a part of a whole text in a different tenses. So again, the students will be part of the class. And uh, in this case, they can improve their uh, like reading skills. The next uh, idea for creating a like reading activity is break up the text and give them the option only reading parts of the text uh, if necessary. So when the students receive the, uh, the specific part of the reading activity, they can analyze it and go to the next part uh, easier. However, for the advanced students, we can write a short summary of a reading text as an activity or write a paragraph or two giving their opinion on the piece, uh, for example, on a piece of paper. So in this case, the students can uh, start um, rec recognizing the ideas which they have read during their reading activity and prepare some opinions in order to mention in different pieces that they have uh, read, okay? These are some ideas. There are going to be mm, as many ideas because we are teachers and uh, we uh, can provide different ideas for the students. Okay, for example, another type of reading activities that I always mention that presenting a reading activity to the students, uh, for example, in a, uh, in a, as a, as a, in a simple way, 
and try to ask the students to develop their uh, reading activity by adding or changing the tenses. Uh, so in this case, the students need to understand the whole content. Or another uh, idea could be, uh, in this case, presenting a pre-reading and after that have some discussion with the students and present the post-reading activities. So with this kind of activities, the students can also improve their reading skills. Now we'd like to ask the teachers, what kind of ideas can you suggest in order to uh, create, in order to create a student-centered uh, reading activities? You're allowed to open your microphone or send a text in the chat. Okay, let's see who is the first one. Okay, I have one comment. Uh, it's mentioning, yeah, providing the reading activity with videos so students would listen them and watch them. Yeah, okay, with technology, very good. Next comment, let's see. Amazing, uh, Ms. Lynn is mentioning that I like to make my students recreate the text in a play as a drama. Mm -hmm. That's going to be uh, the creation, the process of the reading activity. Oh, amazing. And our teacher is mentioning doing or yeah, doing the activity with a role play. Oh, yeah. As you know, role play uh, is going to be one technique that uh, you can always work with your students. Very good. Let's see. You can also send uh, the message uh, in the YouTube or in the uh, Zoom, and we can also check that. Let's go through the next one. Let's see, Miss Maria Isabel is mentioning a round table to discuss what they have read. Get yeah, process section, exactly. So the first they will read that, later they will process the uh, like a reading activity as a post, uh, post reading activity in order to analyze the content. Very good. You are going to create, actually, this is the sign of student-centered classroom. Okay, let's go to the next skill. Uh, I would like to give you also some ideas about uh, creating some, creating some uh, listening activities based on to the difficulty levels. For example, in case you have less advanced students, you can pre-teach vocabulary to the students and using the uh, visual prompt. So they, uh, they check the idea, check their vocabularies and remember that when they hear the, or when first they listen to the like audio. And in case of advanced students, uh, in this case, for for example, true false questions, they can use, uh, for example, why or why not. So they need to remember uh, what happened exactly in each scenario. And uh, in this case, they can uh, memorize uh, the whole amount of the listening activity or they can understand, that's better. Or another idea for let's advance student is uh, give the students time to discuss the answers with a peer or the classmate before uh, feeding by giving feedback, okay? So in this case, they can double check their answers and uh, presenting, uh, present the results. In case of advanced students, I like this early idea. Uh, focus on accent or in annotation and have the students copy it. Also focus on the way the one focus on the wide of that intonation where needed. Okay. 
So in this case, the students can also uh, speak with the correct intonation when it's necessary. Mm, the next uh, idea for listening activity is, when is the time to listen for a second time? Give the students a script or the transcript to follow along with. This is the way that most of the teachers are following. However, there's a better way of presenting that for advanced students. Give out a script of the exercise and have the students pick out and find the definitions, meaning, or the tricky words. And in this case, as I've mentioned, they can always change the scenario as they want and they would be more creative. This is going to be one uh, idea for listening activities. Another uh, activity, another idea that I always recommend my students is uh, because in, we in Richmond we have English attack also, and the, uh, the, the students can always double check the most important vocabularies before watching the video or listening to audio activity or listening activity. So what I do with my students is creating a, uh, a speaking activity prior to listening activity. So um, I'm trying to create some questions or I'm trying to lead the, uh, the, the, the mind of my students so they will use those vocabularies that is going to be presented in the listening activity. So at least they will first uh, listen to the ideas or listen to the vocabulary or listen to the pronunciation. And when they listen to the audio, they would be ready to um, like call, uh, call, call up for the, to recall the, uh, in this case, uh, the ideas. That's going to be some ideas. Now let's go through the next one. Uh, I really like these ideas about writing. Uh, one of the teachers mentioned that uh, he is very good at um, uh, like create, preparing the students for international exams. These ideas also could be useful for you. Uh, as you know, there are many ways to uh, prepare the students. Uh, the one that I really like is the first one, corrected the draft uh, with the students before they rewrite it neatly. Uh, I really like it. Uh, these days we have, for example, a grammar checker or paraphraser. So it make it uh, maybe easier. However, before that, uh, in, the, in the real exam, the teachers can always give them uh, some feedback. And in this case, they can uh, do their best in the next, uh, next time. Or uh, for advanced students, they can provide creative tasks so they, they can complete it at their own ability levels. As an example, as an example um, you can imagine a situation that the teacher is going to provide a question about a problem solution. And they can, um, the teacher can uh, give uh, different outcomes for the students because they think they will use different type of vocabularies. So in this case, uh, the students based on their own ability, they can create different endings in order to reach that outcome. Next idea for, for example, writing activity is reduce the word limit or the increase the time limit. Uh, the students need to write uh, their own writing within 60 words or uh, maybe they need to write as many uh, words as they can. Uh, for example, uh, in for example, in the pre the twenty minutes, okay, or for example, in different moments. So in this case, when we reduce, decrease, or increase the uh, the time, the time and the limits of the vocabularies, the students need to create uh, expand. They need to expand the uh, number of vocabularies that they know. For advanced students, they can use, for example, some correction codes that the teachers will do always. And uh, in, this, in this case, the students can correct themselves or they can share their 
uh, maybe writing exercise with their peers. So again, peer assessment could be helpful for themselves. And the last idea for writing activity is provide an example piece of writing before the actual activity starts uh, or provide the scaffolding. No, when we um, provide, when we want to present uh, the new, uh, for example, activity or uh, any writing activities, it's very ne it's necessary to uh, support the students uh, in their zone. Uh, that's why we call it uh, scaffolding. When we provide them with special help and support so they can feel uh, our existence as a teacher, as a supporter, so they can do the writing. Or uh, as in case of for the advanced students, uh, uh, as always, as I always do that, let them write more <laughs> and write with a certain time limit, uh, specific time that they have. So in this case, they need to think fast or think uh, efficiently in order to present their uh, ideas in a text uh, and a writing activity. And by the end of that, some ideas for speaking activities, it could be provide the students time to gather their own ideas with a role playing or discussing. As you can see, this is an example of student center classroom or uh, in case of advanced students, they can uh, justify or defend their opinions based on the topic that they have mentioned. Um, in this case, they can always mention, uh, we can create always new topics based on those uh, opinions. Or in case of uh, another idea for the less advanced students, we can present uh, or allow students to make notes uh, while they are, uh, for example, taking their time to uh, create their ideas. This is going to be one idea for the less advanced students and um, for the students who are in a better level, they can use, uh, we can ban easy words. For example, they cannot use the A1 or A2, or they cannot uh, use this specific synonyms or certain words while they are using their right, uh, like maybe while they are speaking. So in this case, they need to optimize their uh, vocabulary list. And the, the last idea for less advanced student is, the one that I really like also, per and advanced and less advanced students, because uh, they can uh, learn something from together and the ideas is going to be sure. And both of them would uh, like in this case increase. And uh, an idea for advanced students could be, students should record their speaking, playback and self-correction because self-correction could help them again to be the best version of themselves, as you call it, personal best. And uh, in this case, the students can do their best in the next time that they are presenting. These are some ideas that teachers can focus when they are creating the student-centered learning environment. So if I would like to summarize all of the activities, uh, you know, we have lots of tips in order to teach the grammars, teach the language or teach the skills. But which could uh, which of them could help us to create those environment that, that environment? I mean, and these, as you can see, these uh, ideas could help you to apply that. I would like to know if uh, the teachers would like to mention any ideas about uh, the about some speaking activities, some listening activities. Any question, Mr. Julio? Was there any question in the chat? No, uh, on YouTube, no. Okay, thank you. Okay, there is a message. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, one of the teachers is mentioning, I love uh, doing the role play with all of the skills. Yeah. 
yeah, role play could be applied in uh, with all of the skills because the students will do the activities. Let's see. <laughs> no more comments. <laughs> okay, so uh, that was that was all about this webinar. Uh, we have many comments also. It's providing creating debates oh amazing creating debates will help the students to be uh like uh innovative uh with their ideas very good miss kathy is mentioning if you can provide the slides uh that you are sharing you can watch the recording on youtube page of santiana and uh, watch it as many times as you want. Uh, it, if you search, well, I, I would like to, I would, I would ask the, the person who was contacted with you to share the link. You're welcome, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, as I was mentioning, you can uh, search on YouTube, uh, Santillana, uh, uh, Ecuador, and you will see the, the you can search the name of your creating a student center uh, learning uh, learning classroom and you will uh, find the recording thank you thank you for coming okay so that's all um that was my pleasure to be with you dear teachers and uh check uh or review some ideas together mr julio is there anything to mention um, in this case, well, um, extremely thankful for all the people that have been here uh, for, uh, for your presence. Uh, we are going to provide you with a link uh, for helping us with your attendance. Um, yes. Uh, can you give, give us a second? I would please? like to ask. Yes, uh, there is going to be a link to be sent. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Antonio. Please, all of the teachers that has uh, that have a uh, um, the tent uh, has attendance today. Please try to make a click on. Um, the link was just provided by the chat box. Try to fill up the form with your full name. We are extremely grateful for your presence. Um, we are hoping that everything that we said um, helps you uh, for improving inside your develop for your classes. Um, if you have any question, please try to ask anything for uh, the master Vahid. Okay, try to ask him anything if you have questions, please. Actually, um, thanks a lot, Mr. Bahid, for uh, providing us with your knowledge. Uh, I think with, uh, with that, we have finished. Thanks a lot. We, did, uh, we appreciate your attendance for all of you. Thank you very much. That was my pleasure. And I'm honored to say that uh, that was a good webinar and we shared lots of good knowledge together. Hopefully you can also uh, apply it in your classes and you can also um change the uh like update education for the students you're welcome you're welcome
please, all of you, don't forget, try to um, try to make sure that you fill up the, the attendance, the form that we just sent. Remember that the link is by the chat box, please. Try to confirm that you have show your attendance. If you feel the attendance, now you can leave the class. Thanks all of you. <laughs>